Under what constitutional authority, my dear friends, can the President of the United States, can your Congress support handing three and a three hundred and eighteen point five billion dollars a year of taxpayers' money to fifteen or twenty million illegal aliens who have violated our rule of law? Under what provision of the Constitution does the President have the power to take away your Second Amendment rights to bear arms? Under the Constitution, your obligation is to look at the President and the Congress's action and ask a simple question. Is what he or she proposing ensuring my freedom or taking it away? You have the constitutional right, the constitutional right to stand up and fight when he is not. Are you ready to oppose him, Wisconsin? To use your expression, let's cut to the chase, cut to the ending. We all know what the problems are. We've all heard the speeches. We all agree. We all stand and applaud. Now, as any good psychiatrist knows, you can pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for psychiatric treatment. What happens at the end of your consultation with these mind doctors? He asks a simple question. All right, we've got it all out in the open. Now, what are you going to do about it? The doctor can do nothing. You have to make an act of will. I'm preaching to the choir. You're all here as an act of will to participate. Just some quick suggestions as to how you can activate what you've heard. Number one, get your federal representatives to vote in favor of the Enumerated Powers Act of H.R. 4 50, which requires each and every act of Congress to contain a concise and definite statement of the constitutional authority relied upon for the enactment of each portion of that bill. <laughs> Folks, we're not here today to, to shout and scream against issues. We're against amnesty. We're against cap and trade. New politicians will come in four years from now and do the same if you don't clean out the system. This is a way to ensure your children's future. Clean out the system. Sponsor town hall meetings. Imagine if three times a year you hold a town hall meeting here in this wonderful building. Not on politics, not on divisive policies, but on a simple question, have we been true to the principles of our Constitution? Publicize our Constitution. Make our Constitution important in our society. Have a town hall meeting on the Constitution. Get people thinking about the Constitution. Everything else you heard is insignificant if you don't understand that our democracy is controlled by the media. You have to gain the media's eye. That's what you did when 1.7 million marched on Washington. You must do the same thing with the Constitution. And I say that because my handler, Bob Basso, was a former news director for NBC. He's been there. He's done that. He's seen it. If you don't capture the eye of the media, even when they're not looking for you, you're not going to win this battle. And who can argue against the Constitution of the United States of America? You have an incredible opportunity to bring this, Wisconsin, to all of America. Then I'm going to suggest that you sponsor debates with young people. If you don't get young people involved because the schools aren't teaching it, then you've achieved nothing. Suppose you were to get the international debate topic, which you can in the state, of Wisconsin for high schools and colleges next year to be to claim, have we been true to the principles of our Constitution, pro and con, and for a year the students will be debating that. That's putting what you heard today into action. And finally, my friends, restore the teaching of American history in every single school in Wisconsin. Don't ask. 
Joan, ask your school boards. It's not their school, it's your school. Demand it. How do you do that? How do you do that in your various groups? Put action teams, don't call them committees, put seven person action teams together. Give them four or five high schools in the area to go to and to look at their history books. Conduct a survey and prove to your legislators. Forget the opinions. A statement without proof merits a denial without reason. Conduct a survey and prove to them that 80% of your schools are teaching this trash. We know more about gay and lesbian history. We know more about feminism than we know about our own constitution. Make it a national issue. Finally, the words you've been dying to hear, finally, every great achievement, particularly the young people in this audience, every great achievement in the United States of America, my dear friends, has started out as an impossibility. It was impossible that 2,000 walking skeletons, without shoes, without socks, would walk out of Valley Forge, and four years later, the 2,000 grew to 80,000 and defeated the number one military power on earth at Yorktown. It was impossible, but they did it. It was impossible that white men would get together in a great civil war to fight to free black men, but they did it. It was impossible that America and young people who don't know about World War II know this. It was impossible that America with the 19th Standing Army behind Brazil and Sweden on December 7th, 1941, could go up against a combined enemy with 310 combat divisions when the United States of America only had one combat division. But they did, and they won. It was impossible, it was impossible, my dear friends, that a small, frail lady who never raised her voice above a whisper could start a revolution that would bring civil rights to her people. But Rosa Parks did. And now it is impossible that you here in this room, those who are talking and those who are listening, It is impossible that Sheboygan will lead Wisconsin and lead the nation in studying and exposing the principles of our Constitution. But will you do the impossible, Sheboygan? Six months ago, your motto was, yes, we can. I believe you have earned the right to a new motto. Yes, we have taken back our country, and we will never, never let it go again. My name is Thomas Paine. I'll see you on the next march on Washington. This time, three million strong. God bless America. God bless Wisconsin. Wisconsin.